Welcome to our channel guys. It is a very beautiful Wednesday morning, the 9th of February here in Kenya. And I'm doing this video at around 3 a.m. in the morning. So you can see the lipid shadow in the background. What is Jim Wanjigi mission in ODM? And who is Jim Wanjigi working for? Raila Odinga is out of the country and the ODM is planning a joint NDC with Jubilee Party on 25th and 26th of February in Nyayo Stadium. So this evening, the 8th of February, Jimmy Wanjigi wrote a four-page letter to Orange Democratic Party Secretary General Edwin Sifuna faulting him for having called for the ODM NDC and mistakenly he omitted he either by design or by just forgetting he omit he omitted something that is very crucial to one gentleman Jimmy Wanjigi Jimmy Wanjigi is worried why in the advertisement i think that was sent to the media houses that was published on nation on Saturday, why the ODM NDC did not include nomination of ODM presidential candidate for the August general election. The topmost organ NDC normally happens once in five years, and it is NDC that nominates the presidential candidate for the party. ODM has been in existence for the last 15 years, from 2006 to now, it's almost 16. And they've had a candidate in 2007, 2013, and 2017. Jimmy Wanjig is worried. Why, really, this time round, they are not going to field a presidential candidate. Remember, last year, September, he was at the ODM offices and announced that he was going to seek the ODM ticket to vie for the presidential, to seek presidential bid. And he was out and ready to battle it out with Railo Dinga. Now, I have gone through that letter and I am going to tell it in plain black and white in this video. Why I am seeing the hands of William Ruto in that letter, having gone through that letter, I want to justify for you that just going by bits of the content, that it is just part, it is just exposing the larger scheme by Jimmy Wanjigi to scuttle Ray Lodinga's presidential bid, to frustrate it. And guys, before you proceed, I think if you're watching this video and you've not yet subscribed, Take a second and subscribe. Also click the notification bell so that we'll get updated whenever we publish a video. But let me tell you how it all started. Jimmy Wanjigi, I think he's in amongst NASA co-principals. He was with Raila during NASA and is believed that he maybe funded or contributed to Raila Dinga's presidential campaign last time. And he's on record saying that Raila was not supposed to buy. No one knows the secret deal between Wanjigi and Raila because Raila has never responded to Wanjigi in public. And if there is a document that Wanjigi owns and knows on that MOU, no one has that understanding. But what I have seen is an consistent, a consistent approach by Jimmy Wanjigi to take charge of ODM party. According to the constitution of the party, the ODM was supposed to hold a grassroots leaders elections, I think in 2020. But that did not happen because of the COVID-19 outbreak. So either by design or it was just by coincidence, ODM did not conduct it. And Jimmy Wanjigi was targeting that exercise so that he can plant his emissaries and sympathizers within the ODM party system. Instead, the ODM party resorted to 
pick those elections, those leaders by consensus. Something that he has mentioned in that letter was against the constitution. And that was done deliberately because for one thing that if you realize how ODM operated, you realize that it is within, it's only the party that has the structures. So what they went forward and did, they actually made sure that these positions are normally given to very powerful leaders in those areas. For example, if you look at, uh, I remember in Kingi, when Kingi was the county, ODM county chairperson, when he resigned to join to form his own party, the person who was given that seat is Teddy Mwambire, who is the Ganze MP. Same if you look at Mombasa, that the ODM chairman, I think, died, county chairman died, and the person who was given was the brother, stepbrother to Hassan Joho. So these positions were given to powerful people so that they are not prone to manipulation. The initial deal by Wanjigi was to make sure that he plants his own people within the ODM system so that because he knows that at the NDC, it is this uh, ODM the delegates are going to elect. So because he has already planted his own people, he's going to find his way at the NDC. But that did not happen and now he became very angry. So after that mission failed, he now went and started now opening ODM offices. I think you remember the office that was opened in May in Nyeri and it told the police went and vandalized it that it was against the law and they had not been informed. That was done strategically. He was trying to take charge of grassroots, ODM at grassroots, because he realized that the party officers that were there had already, they were never there because they are run at those county level, I think it's because of the budget constraints. So that mission number one failed. Then he came now for the national politics and did one thing, and I have to say that he was working for William Ruto. After William Ruto took, uh, actually snatched Mosale uh, Mudavadi from OKA, the deal was direct, Jimmy Wanji was, was going to court Stephen Kalonzo Musioka so that he blocks Kalonzo Musioka from working with Raila Odinga. But you know Raila and Uhuru seems to have had a deal because I think I'm in this channel I analyzed that Kalonzo belonged to that class. Kalonzo, the club of Kalonzo is Raila and Uhuru. So after Uhuru and Raila realized that, I think they met Kalonzo secretly, got a deal, and now one Kenya alliance is now moving towards Azimila Omoja and he has remained alone and is now just remained one man standing. He has lost the Oka that he wanted because he wanted to take charge of Oka that has failed under very shrewd conditions. And that is why even Mata Karua was introduced in Oka. So that was the second attempt. Now, this letter that he's doing, this is the third attempt by Jimmy Wanjigi to make sure that he frustrates the merger between ODM and the Jubilee Party. And in this video, I want to explain for you the objective of this letter. In Jim Wenjigi's letter, he is wondering why ODM is not dominating, is not in, in part of the agenda in that NDC, Edwin Sifuna did not include nomination of the presidential candidate. And Raila Odinga outwitted him very smartly. They did not introduce it because Raila Odinga might be thinking of going to be an Azimula Umoja candidate. Even though on paper, Raila Odinga is going to be an ODM candidate. But because they don't want this fracas with Wanjigi, they've already tried now to play the game higher and make sure that he's not vulnerable to that politics of, to the troubles by Jimmy Wanjigi. So that is one thing that happened. Now Jimmy Wanjigi is wondering why they are not going to pick a candidate. The reason why he is protesting and what he wants to achieve with this protesting is this. He wants to make sure that he goes to court and ODM is blocked from making that arrangement or rather from making that coalition with Jubilee Party. Or because they have realized it's going to be joint NDC. He wants to at least there a court injunction on ODM so that on that day, it's only Jubilee that is going to do NDC. ODM will have to wait. 
but to see the plan by the Azimio la Umoja team is to have a joint ODM and Jubilee NDC and Jubilee is going to include all those other parties, all those other small parties. So you will see Kimeme with his party there, Ubuntu party by Lee Kima, Kinyanju is there, uh, the governor from Meru, the governor from West Pokot, Meru is Kereto Murungi, West Pokot, Nyilangapua. All those people are going to be in that. But now he wants to frustrate that day by throwing a court injunction in the way of ODM party. Because if, if Jim Wanjigi is interested in vying for presidency, there are of 100 political parties in Kenya. And so tomorrow he can walk. He doesn't, he doesn't even need to go and register a party. There are parties that are already registered there and they don't have finances. They don't even have an MCA candidate. He just goes and adopt one party, finance that party, rebrand the party, and why? But he has to stick within ODM and fight ODM within ODM because the aim is not even for him to get that ticket. Because for once, he's not a presidential candidate. His aim is to make sure that he dismantles Raila Odinga's Azimio La Umoja dream by fighting within ODM. This letter is also intended to injure the reputation of ODM party even in that alliance. And this is going to be a fodder to even the other parties that are going to work with, with ODM. Because if Musalem David is complaining the other side that he betrayed us, Kalonzo is saying, oh, he betrayed us in terms of the finances, but I don't think Kalonzo have an issue. Then there is a court order that has been issued by now that Jim and Jiggy have gone for. He's also feeling like his ODM is not democratic. You know, it's going to affect the reputation of the party. And according to him, that's what he thinks he deemed right. So all these are steps and are wider schemes to make sure that he blocks Raila Odinga from ascending presidency. The reason why I'm saying this, that it is there is the hand of William Ruto is here. Jimmy Wanjigi is not Raila Odinga's competitor. Raila Odinga's competitor in August 8th general election is William Ruto. So anything that is going against Re William is going against Raila Odinga is going on the way of William Samoy Ruto. And I want to believe that Jimmy Wanjigi is simply finding a way with is simply find a way with it. And so why do you think, lastly, that Wanjigi has a problem with Raila? What do you think is his problem with Raila? One, I think there was an MOU. And that MOU, no one knows the content, but I think there is breach of that MOU. Raila has been, everyone has been crying for him that, oh, he betrayed us, he betrayed us. So I think there was an MOU somewhere. We may not have the content of that MOU, but things maybe did not went south with that MOU. Secondly, he knows he doesn't want Raila to work with Uhuru. In fact, if there was no handshake and Raila was maybe teaming up with Ruto, I think Jimmy Wanjigu will not be disturbing Raila. But he knows that if Raila teams up with Uhuru, they stand a big chance to win and he will still be in the dark. That is why he's actually now fronting William Samoy Ruto. He's, he's on record saying that even the handshake was not mentioned. And the truth of the matter here is, if Raila Dinger did not tell Jimu and Jiggy about the handshake, then I have to say that that was a mistake. Because Jimu and Jiggy was with him all throughout. Thirdly, Jimmy has a problem with the government over the gun scandal and all this harassment. Even though they might be looked seen as politically persecuted, but in from where I'm seated, I think the deep business deals that went so. So, guys, that's my analysis. Have you, what do you think about that letter? And if it was that Raila Odinga was supposed to support Jimmy Wanjigi for presidency 2022. Then Jimmy will not be doing all these letters to ODM and pushing all this democracy thing. He will be in public and will have campaigned saying that Raila was supposed to support me. Nangekua Masha Acha ODM, Ametafta Patiake, is doing anti Raila campaign. But there is also another narrative that he's going to go against Raila to make a name so that when Raila exits the stage, he takes over from ODM party. I don't think that is possible. The only person that made a career for going against Raila is William Ruto. 
when he went against Tyler after the 2007 general election. All the other fellas fell out. Amwamba have never won any seat after he left. Ababu na Mwamba have never won any seat after he left, he left ODM party. So guys, what's your opinion on Jimmy Wanjigi? And that's my analysis. Thank you very much for over now, I think, almost 6,000 subscribers.